Hello, everyone. My name is Sam Raymond. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard my voice enough today, uh, I'm a um, crowdfunding specialist at the World Bank in Washington, D.C. So my uh, jet lag is subsiding, and I'm starting to get a little bit more energy now. So. Um, so we've had a wonderful series of discussions all day long, really, talking about uh, the forefront of crowdfunding uh, uh, here in, in France, in, in Europe more generally, in North Africa as well. Um, we've heard about peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, we've heard about uh, equity uh, financing. Uh, we've also heard about contributions and pre-sale crowdfunding as well. And um, I have finance fiction behind me, so I'm sorry to say that uh, the premise of my talk today um, is one fiction, and, and that is that crowdfunding does not exist. The pooling of capital by multiple individuals and the funding of, of projects has existed probably for hundreds of years, thousands of years, as long as there's been capital. We, uh, in the United States, I was in New York a few, uh, a few days ago, actually on Monday, and on my way out of town, see Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, uh, holding her beacon high, so th thank you all. Uh, French taxpayers for, for that. But many people don't know that actually the city of New York, with the beautiful gift of the statue, um, had nowhere to put, put it, no structural element to actually hold it erect. And they crowdfunded the base of the statue from the people of New York. They put an ad in the paper and they said, please, will you contribute? And when it was successful, they did, they raised the money. They put another ad saying thank you and it was delivered on time, so we, we contributed alongside. To this day as well, I mean, I'm a Barack Obama guy and now a Bernie Sanders guy. Is this being recorded? I don't wanna, I wanna be able to retract that maybe later. Um, and we see the, the pooling of funds by, by individuals for, for these campaigns as well on a very regular basis. Um, so it's a very, very, very common practice, but over the last 10 years or so, or maybe even longer, we've seen with the rise of the internet and other uh, new technologies, um, we've seen a vast increase in what is possible in terms of sharing information, engaging networks, um, and contributing capital via the internet. So we needed a new term, and crowdfunding was born. And so what did that mean? Or what were the conceptions at the earliest stages, maybe a few talked about crowdfunding five or ten years ago, maybe. You had the, uh, online lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending was, the, was the, the, uh, premier nomenclature. And this meant, in the conception of, of many, an individual looking through the internet at another individual, judging on information provided there on the platform, whether or not they were w uh, worthy of their, uh, their lending, their capital, and at what rate they should uh, they should return. And this was wonderful. In the United States, we had um, platforms that operated on this. The platform would collect information, display it, and you would have, in many cases, a bidding. Even the borrower could decide which uh, money, uh, what monies they would want to take at which uh, interest rate. And it was wide open. It seemed, it seemed all possible. In terms of equity, people conceived, yes, Individuals will be able to judge a company that they believe in, whether it be on their corner or on the other side of a country, and they would want to offer capital to that company to take an, an equity position uh, in, that, in that business. It said, maybe, the, you know, we put out a report a couple of years ago that said, uh, you know, the crowdfunding industry uh, would almost double the, the uh, current existing venture capital industry. It was a very hopeful time for equity financing. In terms of uh, non-return-seeking crowdfunding, you have pre-sale, where you can uh, sell, a, um, sell a product ahead of its uh, actual production. Maybe it's an idea uh, that, you, that you engage people with, and they, will, they are willing to buy it before you even make it, if you have a strong team and a good plan. Um, or you could donate to a charity that you, that you enjoyed and that you, that you saw that you believed in, so long as, again, you saw something that convinced you of this. And so this was, the, this was the trajectory on which we uh, were heading. But what do, we, what do we see today? Is this crowdfunding, really? In the debt space, you have platforms that have evolved 
from a place, the majority of platforms, have evolved from a place where the peer and peer were, were in the name to a place now that looks a lot more like traditional banking. When you go on to some of the largest peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, or I should say marketplace lending platforms today, you will be asked for your FICO score and uh, other information that's maybe collected uh, by a bank as well. So that seems to seem a more like traditional banking. On the, sort, on the supply of capital as well, yes, it is true that individuals can contribute to, um, to your uh, request for capital. Um, but the vast majority of dollars is contributed by many of the institutions that um, are huge banks, mutual funds, um, uh, and other funds uh, that are actually investing in the underlying asset as well. And I'm sorry to say that I just came from a conference in um, New York, like I said, on Monday, uh, where it was a peer-to-peer -peer lending conference discussing the uh, bundling, packaging, and offering um, of equity on, a, on the underlying uh, on the underlying asset. So I'm sorry to say that that is actually occurring today. In the contribution space, it is true that you can still seek out an idea and, and, uh, and put your money behind it ahead of time. And this is expanding uh, in leaps and bounds, enabling entrepreneurs and other um, uh, thinkers with projects and, and ideas um, to launch new, new endeavors, and it's growing globally. It's something without uh, heavy regulatory burden, it can grow uh, around the world, and that's what we're, that's what we're seeing. But it, as far as I can see, it's not much different than what you would buy on Alibaba, perhaps. It's just the product hasn't been made yet. Maybe it hasn't even been made on Alibaba yet. So what are we seeing here? Yes, we're seeing uh, increased access to capital, we're seeing um, a democratization of the allocation of that capital. Um, we're seeing other uses and, uh, and positive benefits. It's been shown that uh, a study in Australia that uh, businesses that leveraged crowdfunding at the beginning of their life cycle were more competitive and more sustainable over time. They had a better sense of their customers' needs, wants, and wishes, and they were, they were stronger for it in the future. Um, but, and this is crowdfunding, it is. But crowdfunding does not exist because these, these flows of information and capital are simply where the world is heading today. We will, as, as we evolve, become more connected and not even through our minds, but to our wallets as well. I was hearing a company that offers a service where you can get a loan at the point of payment. So if you wanted instead uh, get a loan for your television instead of paying outright, you can do that just in terms of click, cash, credit, loan. So we are moving in this way, and crowdfunding does not exist because this will simply be the new status quo in the future. I think it's a good thing. I think we need to manage risks, risks and be knowledgeable about what this means going forward. Um, but it's not crowdfunding. It just is. Thank you. La recherche est en cours.